Hey guys, it's me. So tonight I'm going to do um, a review on Entwined by Heather Dixon. Or, yeah, Dixon. See, pretty cover. Okay, so this is the 12 Dancing Princess retelling. Um, and it follows the oldest girl and through all the problems that you would think that the 12 dancing princesses would go through. So the main story you guys probably already know is the girls aren't allowed to dance and so they go down inside the the um, palace and in an enchanted forest that's underneath their room. They dance all night and they're watched over by this guy named Keeper while they're dancing and little do they realize is that he is evil and when they do figure it out it's a little too late and basically all hell breaks loose so this this story has like a little bit before they become the 12 dancing princesses that tells about how the mother isn't with them and about how the um how the father, the king, kind of doesn't pay attention to them and stuff like that. And and their resentment towards him. So, there's a little backstory on why they really rebel and start dancing. Um, it's because they have to go through mourning and they don't want to. And they want to dance because it reminds them of their mother and the father wants nothing nothing to do with remembering his wife because he's kind of going through a little crisis and I think almost anybody would if they lost like the love of their life which obviously she was to him um so this book is something that I couldn't put down it was one of it's one of those books that once I started it and I really got into the story the heart of the story which takes a couple chapters I'm going to tell you that right off the bat it does take a while to get into the 12 dancing princess story because you have to go through the more um, the beginning morning uh, morning phases um, I'm going to tell you about a couple of the characters that I absolutely loved obviously I was in love with Azalea from the moment that I met her she was just awesome she she talks more about her sisters and or well the narrator does which I would imagine would be more of her kind of telling the story but not really her kind of talking in third person I felt it was more like that in the storytelling I could be wrong but that's how I felt and um they did talk about the sisters a little bit more but through the things that Azalea would do for her sisters or around her sisters you got to know her and because her sisters were her everything her the two other girls that are like the closest in age to her were Bramble and Clover and everybody was named after a flower I can't remember all their names but it, Bramble and Clover were the two closest and in the end were talked about in the, like the last chapter or so and um I liked them Bramble was like a spitfire and she would she would <laughs> she was really angry with the king really angry almost as angry as Azalea was in the way he was treating them and um such after mother passed away the baby was named Lily so you can figure out like the that it was in alphabetical order based on age because it goes Azalea, Bramble, Clover and then the rest are all in there I can't remember them they're strange names I think I think there was Holly though Hollyhock or something like that anyway um so they it, it's just like a really good story anyway um I really like those those two out of the sisters the uh, Clover and Bramble Clover can um talk without stuttering and by the end of the book she can complete a sentence without stuttering too much or there'd be one stutter 
And, um, yeah. Keeper is an interesting person. Um, or thing. I don't even know if you could call him a person. He, he didn't like him from the beginning, and I didn't trust him. And that's probably because I did read the inside flap where they kind of say it's, um, he likes to keep things, and Azalea, what the heck was it? But there's a cost. The keeper likes to keep things. Azalea may not realize how tangled she is in his web until it's too late. And I think that could have been the reason or just the way he acted when they first met him. He was a little strange and a little scary. And he, if you know the story, when they do... I, when they do meet, like, the person that keeps the pavilion in the, um, fairy tale, they're tra some of the stories talk about how they, the person traps them, or the, um, the princes trap them to say, oh, it's fine that you come and dance with us, um, but... I think it was that, a little bit of that and then a the little bit of what the back flap, uh, the flap said, not the back flap, um, the front flap said. And, um, so I didn't like, I liked him be, as an evil person, but I couldn't stand him. I wanted him to be obliterated, which, um, yeah. So, the reason why they find Keeper is because of Lord Bradford, or Mr. Bradford, telling Azalea, who he thinks is Brandable, and you have to read the story to figure out why he thinks she is her younger sister. Um, he tells her, if you rub silver onto the markings on stones in the castle that say D-E, they're hidden passages and there are rooms that they used to keep stuff in. They were using as storage. And so that's how they get downstairs and meet Keeper, well, down into that part where it's a silver forest and everything. Um, Mr. Bradford is a interesting person. He was the ministers or something like that something to that effect son for the for the country and his father passed away and they wanted him to run and he was afraid to and he didn't want to and this that, and the other thing mr fairweller who i also liked which was another boy in the story he well man He's the minister at present. I believe that's what they're called. I'm just going to call them that. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I, I feel it's minister. But whatever. The, the person that's underneath that runs like parliament or whatever. I know in England they're called ministers. Or something like that. Or I'm thinking of Harry Potter. and Which could always be true. And I'm thinking of minister of magic. But... Whatever. And then there's Lord Teddy, who is just the funniest thing, and they t totally, like, want to, like, destroy him, the girls, and it's so funny. Um, he is the exact opposite of Bramble, who is a spitfire. He is, like, a goofball, and the little girls love him. The younger, um, sisters love him. Lord Bradford, the... All the sisters want to destroy because he turns off their clock. They steal his watch. Um, they throw potatoes at him. Mm, they do a whole bunch of stuff. And yet, he still likes them. Which is the funniest thing ever. And, um... He, he, he's just really funny. And the best part is... When, um... He's bringing Azalea back. I won't tell you why. She left the castle even though she wasn't supposed to. 
and he brings her back and she he says something to her and he calls her bramble and she gets all pissed off runs out uh, runs away from him yells at him says that i'm not bramble i'm azalea and then slams the doors in his face so that was like my favorite part of the entire book because it's just really funny um what i hated about the book was the ending well i didn't hate it i loved the ending for clover and bramble it was the ending for Azalea, who you follow through this entire book and see how she protects her family and tries to protect everybody and take care of everyone and how she comes around with her father and who she couldn't stand to begin with. Um, but the person she falls in love with and the person that um, she winds up marrying her the same person, so I'll give you that one. But you don't really find out like how how everybody's happy about it. If they're not, if they, like I don't know, like they should have kissed or something like that, or or something like it should have ended like that, like a real fairy tale ending. But this ended kind of more like they all became a family again, and I guess that's better because they really weren't in the beginning so the major contrast of them being coming a family is really what the author wanted but I just wanted her to be with him and kiss without her sisters ruining anything oh well so that's the only thing that I didn't really like I mean there's a couple like little things here and there and there were a couple parts that I must say that I did get, like, okay, enough already. But I really did enjoy the book. And it was really interesting. And if you like that type of story, if you like your fairy tales, which I love, and, um, like retellings of fairy tales, which I've always liked, then this is the type of book for you, and you should read it. And so... If not, don't read it because you're not going to be happy with it. And so, but it was a pretty good read for just picking a book off of a cover because I love this cover. And, um, by the way, um, I know I, it, the whole book is centered around dancing. Entwined is in the book a dance, which they actually give you the steps for. Here, I'll read them to you real quick. Um, twist 35, needle, needles eye 35, dip and turn 36. Ladies, Fenty, 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 Fenty. 36, ridge arc 36, under arm swoop 37, thread 37, bead the beading the sash 38, and the catch 38. It's basically a dance that you do with the a man and a woman would do with a sash. And in the book, it talks about how who invented it and how it was done. And it re they talk about the when you first hear about Antoine, the dance you hear about the, the mother and father dancing it and how she never if she got caught it was only by her letting the father catch her and the the memory was very sweet so okay with that being said i'm gonna go i did like this book and i think everybody that likes fairy tales should read it so bye guys